Greetings, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome once again to another edition of Electric Avenue's YouTube updates. This is number 199. I feel like uh, I'm going to have streamers flying out of these castle walls uh, when 200 hits. Uh, sly reference to the uh, Olympics uh, <laughs> opening ceremonies. If you didn't catch that, uh, Go check it out somewhere. Um, Gojira with Marie Antoinette uh, beheaded and all sorts of craziness. Um, yeah, well, it was worth watching. I will say uh, I'm not a huge Celine Dion fan. If uh, you haven't really gathered that yet, I've got nothing against her. Uh, but what a performance. That was a stunning performance she gave at, uh, at the Eiffel Tower. All right. So... It's kind of the slower doldrums of the summer now we're heading into. We've had a pretty active release schedule. If you look back at the last couple new release videos, you can see by the length of the videos being pushing you know, 40 to 50 minutes uh, that there was a lot coming out. So there's a lot to look at. Uh, this did very well, uh, as expected. The police synchronicity box set. Um, check that out if you haven't. Um, there's a 4LP or a 6CD version, and the CD version also includes uh, two CDs of a full live concert from that era. Um, you know, if you remember songs like Every Breath You Take, uh, pretty iconic, big, big stuff from the 80s. Also, the Misfits record doing very well on a kind of a purple, swirly vinyl type thing um so anyway let me get to this week's new releases um the first actually i have to kind of give you a little caveat here there are two things that have not arrived yet that i am was planning on showing today and uh i know for a fact that one of them will 99 percent be here tomorrow the other one i'm really not sure the one that I know is going to be here is um, the uh, secretive Jack White album that is no longer a secret. It's been uh, publicized now on um, all the news, music news media. Um, this was an album that he was giving away in stores, uh, third man stores, for people who were buying other things. They just get a copy of this in their bag. Nobody knew what it was. It didn't have a name on it. Hence... It's going under the name No Name. Uh, it didn't have any track listing or anything on it. Now there's been a track listing posted online. It's been a very secretive Jack White project. Uh, and so there is a, um, a blue swirly vinyl co color that's coming out uh, today. It's released in third man stores and tomorrow, uh, which is uh, August 2nd, Friday, uh, indie stores, cer certain indie stores are going to have it. Uh, we were fortunate to be told about it early, pre-ordered a bunch of them, and uh, I don't know how many other stores are going to have this, but uh, I know that our order got cut in about half. So uh, ordered a lot extra just because I think that if um, the word on the street is lining up with what I'm sort of seeing and hearing. I think this is going to be a pretty significant release for Jack White. Um, I would say his last few releases have been sort of varying. Some are better than others. And, um, you know, they all had good stuff on them, but um, they all delivered a completely sort of different aspect of Jack. This one, um, I've heard quite a bit of it now. It's very Led Zeppelin-esque in their sort of harder, riffy kind of zone. And it's very White Stripes-ish. So if those two things, Zeppelin and classic White Stripes, resonate with you uh, as descriptors, I definitely would check this out. Um, it's probably, I think it's also going to be streaming online on Friday, uh, which is uh, the digital release. And... I don't think that the physical copies are going to last very long, so I'm sort of putting this out now because um, at least this version, now they, we were told there may be another version that comes down the road that's not as limited or uh, something like that. 
but uh, if you're into Jack White, uh, you might want to at least check around opening sometime on Friday to see if uh, ha you know if we have any, how many we have. Probably won't be able to hold them for people because the demand will be so great. Uh, and then you start saying like, I can't really hold this when there's someone that's actually here to pick it up. So um, that, you know, it's just kind of unfortunately the way it is. But that's the nature of this project. It's just so like, and here it is. So, and uh, that's the thing that we're dealing with a lot uh, as record store people, owners these days, um, is uh, this release schedule is always a shock and a surprise. I mean, sometimes you'll find out about things months in advance and get to promote it as a traditional release. Sometimes it's the day before, the week before. Uh, you just really never know what's coming down the road. You don't know how many to order because orders can be cut, allocated. Um, I could have ordered 50 of these and they could say, you're getting two. Yeah, I have no idea what to expect ever. Um, it's kind of like ordering for record store day. It's a big guessing game. So uh, with that being said, Jack White, the other thing that has not shown up yet that is not going to be in this video is Ween, uh, the chocolate and cheese deluxe edition that's supposed to be out, Warner, uh, <laughs> supposed to be out Friday. And uh, I have yet to see it even show up at the warehouse. So I have a feeling that uh, the demand for this release, they totally underestimated and it's probably breaking their system. Uh, so I don't know if we'll actually have those Friday or not. I'm very hopeful, crossing fingers, that it will show up. Um, but you're going to have to just check. I would check the store's uh, social media to see um, what's going on there. So with that being said, let me get to this week's new releases. And the first thing, this is actually kind of a new release slash last release. And this is was pressed as an import. And then we finally got some copies of these. But Olivia Rodrigo, Guts Spilled. And uh, so this is the deluxe version of Olivia's recent album. So it comes with the album. And then there's a five track um, bonus record in here. Uh, featuring Obsessed, Girl I've Always Been, Scared of My Guitar, Stranger, and So American. And uh, it, it, it's not cheap either because it's also pressed on this cool splatter vinyl. Um, so I think it's white with all these colors thrown in it. Uh, hence the Guts theme, right? But this is one of the most popular records of the past 12 months. And uh, at least when her face is on it. This is her face being ripped out, right? Got spilled. So I would get that soon if you want that because I don't know how long those are going to be around. Um, there's a lot of that going around these days, right? Um, so many great new releases out there. Um, same with these Misfits I just mentioned. I think those are fairly limited too and I don't have many left. Uh, Orville Peck, his new album, finally out on vinyl. It's been streaming for about a month now. Uh, it's called Stampede. This is the limited edition baby pink vinyl exclusive. Um, this is a like a pretty long uh, duets album, really, is what this is. I think that this is sort of intended as a way to elevate Orville's profile because I feel like he's got pretty good um, cult following and digital following. But um, I don't know. His sales are sort of like it's kind of up and down. So they're really trying to kind of push him into more of like a mainstream setting. I, the first song on here is Cowboys Are Frequently Secretly Fond of Each Other with Willie Nelson. Um, Orville being um, a gay gay cowboy singer. Um, or Well, he's a country singer, but he's also kind of a crossover alternative singer. He does duets here with a, he does a version of Saturday Night's All Right for Fighting with Elton John. Um, there's Death Valley High with Beck. Uh, there's uh, Papa Was a Rodeo with Molly, Molly Tuttle, Midnight Ride with Kylie Minogue and Diplo, uh, You're an Asshole, I Can't Stand You and I Want a Divorce with Margot Price, uh, Conquer the Heart with Nathaniel Rateliff. Uh, those are some of the highlights on here um, among 
other people, Allison Russell, Teddy Swims, uh, Mickey Guyton. Uh, so anyway, new Orville Peck. Um, and so other new releases I have this week, the new album from X. They say it's their last. Uh, it's called, um, I don't have the name in front of me, Smoke and Fiction. And uh, so Xene, John Doe, um, picture on the back. So uh, yeah, they say it's their last. Uh, we'll see. I don't know. X has been around for a long time. What, 50 years now, I guess? Has it been that long? 45? It's been a while. So um, there comes a time sometimes. A new album from Michelle and Dago Cello. And this is actually on Blue Note Records, her first for that label, I think. Maybe the second. Uh, it's called No More Water, uh, The Gospel of James Baldwin. And Michelle, she always brings something really interesting to the table. Um, just quietly building an incredible catalog of music. And uh, been doing it now for 30 years. Uh, plus, um, she started, uh, her first big breaks were with Maverick Records when she signed uh, with Madonna, who was looking for people for her uh, Warner-approved label at the time. And uh, now she's on Blue Note, so um, still doing it. That's great. Um, new album from Los Lonely Boys, Resurrection. This is their first album in 11 years. Uh, I'm not really sure what... Um, why the long break it's their sixth album featuring the singles dance with me and send more love um i don't maybe there were health reasons or something i would check this out uh, maybe if you're interested in the band and you want to hear what they're doing now so new Los lonely boys uh, i remember their first album was pretty uh pretty successful um okay and new blues pills album and this is called, uh, it's just called Birthday. Um, interesting that it's just a photo of the band. Usually they have these ornate sort of uh, psychedelic artwork covers. Um, I'm assuming that uh, it's about uh, someone was pregnant, <laughs> the lead singer. Uh, and this is on bone white vinyl. So uh, I guess it's all about uh, giving birth in a sort of uh, metal, sort of blues metal way. Um, this album, uh, these guys have been sort of hi heavily hyped. Uh, Brigitte Calls Me Baby is their name. Um, they've been all over TV. I think they were actually on um, CBS Saturday a few weeks ago. Debut album on clear vinyl, NME's breakout artist. They create a landscape halfway between The Cure and The Strokes. So um, I think they're one to check out. Uh, lead singer has a really good voice. Uh, but anyway, but it's an interesting band name. Brigitte Calls Me Baby. Um, and then, <laughs> this I'm really curious about. Uh, a new album from Christabel and David Lynch. And yes, David Lynch, the director of Twin Peaks um, and various other Blue Velvet, Eraserhead, uh, and Christabel, um, she is the kind of Chanteuse-like singer that was brought in to play an FBI agent in Twin Peaks The Return in 2017. Um, kind of a controversial role, um, but David Lynch sees something in her that he really likes. And uh, I think he's worked with her before a little bit on music too, but um, she's had uh, other records under the name Christabel, a C H R Y S T A B E L L. Sometimes it's written as one word, but um, she did an album of Cure covers a couple weeks ago with one of the guys from, uh, oh, oh gosh, I can't remember which. It was one of those lounge bands that's really popular that um, just uh, they do like indie covers of lounge stuff. Anyway, that was uh, Mark. Mark Collin is his name, I think. Um, that was a really good record. If you like The Cure, I would check that out. But I, I have not heard anything from this yet. And all I can say is, if David Lynch is involved, it's going to be experimental in some way. Um, but he says on the cover, here's a quote, 
if you listen to this record three times, you will find a friend. And then it has his initials there. So it's a quirky guy. Uh, Lynch, he's got to be in his mid-late 70s now, I think. So at least um, a couple of Steve Hackett reissues this week. Uh, Bay of Pigs. And this album was originally released in 1983. So uh, what, 41 years ago? This is the first of the legendary guitarist classical guitar albums, newly remastered specifically for vinyl. There's CD versions of these two, but um, guitarist from Genesis, and uh, he just kept making solo records too. Uh, the acoustic guitar is a small orchestra housing other instruments. Pianos, cellos, and harps are hidden away within it. Uh, that's the quote on the back of that one. Uh, the other one that's being released is Momentum, another Steve Hackett. Uh, this is 1988 album, second classical album, instrumental material, uh, available on the first time in 25 years, newly remastered. Um, this one has variation on a theme by Chopin, uh, concert for Munich. It's a portrait of a Brazilian lady, um, sort of a mixture of things there all right uh we get a couple of blue note tone poets this week uh so that should be of interest to jazz people and uh yeah the the tone poets and the classic series that's still been going all summer so if you're a jazz person uh you might want to look back and see what things are going on there but this is an interesting release one i've never seen before it's lee morgan and it's called taru or taru uh, Bernie Maupin, George Benson, John Hicks, Reggie Workman, and Billy Higgins. Very young George Benson, I believe, is on this. Uh, this was released, well, not that young, 1980. So this is about the time that Benson would have been really hitting his um, commercial peak, I think, with songs like Turn Your Love Around. That was maybe 80 or 81. So, um, But he probably was using this as an outlet, and Lee Morgan was still doing uh all of his uh, great trumpet work and so anyway there's that and uh another album uh blue because tone poets tend to always come in twos uh bobby hutcherson and medina if you can see that there uh, this is uh harold land stanley cowell reggie johnson and joe chambers and this one was released also in 1980 so they're going a little bit more late into Blue Note's catalog. Um, sort of the era of what would have been like smooth jazz beginning, like fusion kind of like going into smooth jazz. And, uh, you know, it's interesting to hear what these guys that were sort of traditionalists were still doing at that point. So anyway, those are your tone poets for the week. Um, there's a big uh, Verve Acoustic Sounds release this week. Uh, Diana Krall, The Look of Love. Uh, Mrs. Elvis Costello here. I think this was before they got married, actually. Um, they have a, a pair of twins together, a set of twins. Um, anyway, this is uh, mastered from the original tapes by top mastering engineers at QRP Quality Records tip on gatefold sleeves this one is not cheap because it's a double uh, for some reason they spread it over two records because it is a little bit longer um, and a lot of these songs are sort of classic uh, I would call jazz balladry um, look of love sort of implies like Dusty Springfield doing that song but uh, which they do feature here produced by Tommy LaPuma um, who's a great producer. And uh, this is just an album, such a romantic album to put on and just kind of melt into the background. Now, it is four sides, so you're going to have to flip it a little bit, but um, for maximum audio fidelity, all right? Um, and then there's a bunch of um, now playing, uh, Rhino keeps doing this series of the now playing, and they've been there've been so many good choices come out in this uh catalog so this week we get the velvet underground uh on silver vinyl 
This features Sweet Jane, the full-length version, Rock and Roll, the full-length version, um, then uh, a few other songs, uh, Who Loves the Sun, Oh Sweet Nothing, I Found a Reason, uh, then I'm Waiting for the Man live at Max's, Kansas City, Femme Fatale live, uh, I'll Be Your Mirror live, Ocean, and I'm sticking with you a couple of songs from their 1985 record. It's an interesting compilation. It's on silver vinyl. These are never very expensive. This is like 20, 21 bucks. Um, another one this week, uh, we get the Stooges. Um, so you've had like Stooges reissues before, but this one uh, is more of like, kind of like a greatest hits is this, this series here. This one has, I want to be your dog down on the street. 1969, Loose, No Fun, TVI, Real Cool Time, 1970, Little Doll, and Dirt. So kind of a peak era of uh, Stooges stuff there. Um, I don't know if anything from Raw Powers on it, but I don't think so. Now these are because they're Warner compilations. Captain Beefheart and the Magic Band. Whoever thought you'd see a Captain Beefheart compilation on vinyl in 2024? Uh, let's see. <laughs> Here's the back. <laughs> Featuring I'm Gonna Booglerize You Baby, Her Eyes Are a Blue Million Miles, The Smithsonian Institute Blues, My Head Is My Only House Unless It Rains, Click Clack, Low Yo-Yo Stuff, Too Much Time, Clear Spot, Lick My Decals Off Baby, and big eyed beans from Venus. Interesting guy, interesting guy. All uh, right, and love Arthur uh, Arthur Lee's band. This is on transparent red vinyl, as was the Captain Beefheart, featuring My Little Red Book, Seven and Seven Is, Orange Skies, Alone Again, or House Is Not a Motel, and More Again, The Red Telephone. Maybe the people would be the times or between Clark and Hildale. You set the scene and always see your face. All right. So some cool comps there. Uh, some reissues. Quiet Riot. Uh, God, my brother played the crap out of this album when it came out. And um, I, I probably know every note. Uh, f the first metal album to ever hit number one. Uh, features their version of Come On, Feel the Noise and Metal Health, Bang Your Head. Um, both hits, Come On, Feel the Noise, was a huge MTV staple. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I mean, you couldn't escape it in the early 80s. It was dedicated to the memory of Randy Rhodes. Uh, Kevin Dubrow was the lead singer. I believe he's since passed away. His brother Terry is a famous... Uh, famous uh, plastic surgeon on TV, uh, a formerly Beverly Hills house husband. Anyway, um, Quiet Riot. I know a lot about those people, don't I? Um, <laughs> Daryl Hall and John Oates, Abandoned Luncheonette. So this is probably in this area, sort of outside Philly, one of the most iconic uh, sort of albums of the area. Uh, when I first moved here, everybody either had a copy of this album or talked about this album. And it's um, it's a great album. It features She's Gone, which was the sort of... Because they were a little more singer songwritery at this point. It was uh, mid-70s before they became uh, Hall & Oates of the 80s. Um, and it's this is released by Friday Music, Joe Ragoso, uh, under his guidance of remastering um i don't know i think it's color vinyl but they'll never tell you because friday music doesn't bother with stickers but um it's cool this uh sort of little luncheonette counter that's abandoned it is abandoned uh that f sat alongside one of the local highways uh up i think montgomery county for a while near uh the limerick area and it, it has been since uh taken away now it's gone uh but it was <laughs> She's gone, but it was there for a really long time. So anyway, um, people always talk about, oh my gosh, I remember that thing sat there for, it sat there for decades. Uh, so uh, another reissue, Goldfinger, Hello Destiny. Um, this was a very big album in uh, what late late nineties, I think. Um, sort of like uh, ska. 
punk, uh, maybe more punk, I suppose, but uh, this is on Purple Blast vinyl. People are saying he doesn't know what he's talking about. I remember selling this a lot. I do remember that. So I don't know if I heard the album maybe more than once, but um, they were a big deal for a little while. This is one of their biggest albums, too. So, uh, And I think this is also some kind of color. Oh, it's Purple Blast is what I said. So it's a color vinyl. Um, another uh, color vinyl, Translucent Orange. 25th anniversary of Vertical Horizon. Uh, the album Everything You Want. Well, Everything You Want was a pretty big like rock radio hit uh it also features you're a god and best i ever had gray sky morning it's a pretty big um pretty big debut for these guys i feel like every 90s band that was kind of like rock sort of all looked like this like am i wrong they all were like just kind of dudes that i don't know it's not like they rolled out of bed but they you know they're all, they all kind of look like how I'm dressed today. <laughs> like, you know, like, I mean, unless you were like Marilyn Manson or something like that. Uh, but I think he was the lead singer. Anyway, I remember seeing that video for Everything You Want a lot on uh, MT, MTV back when they showed videos. Um, sort of a uh, indie rock classic here, the Drop 19s with their album Delaware. Um, so again, sort of referencing around this area. Um, let's see, Daffodil Yellow Vinyl Remastered, um, and it says some of the proceeds are going to artists to prevent gun violence. Uh, features also the song Winona. Um, this was kind of a pretty big underground indie kind of record. Again, sold a fair amount of it back in the day. Whiplash, the soundtrack to that movie. So you get a lot of random stuff this week. Uh, single LP black vinyl with liner notes, uh, Miles Teller and J.K. Simmons. What an intense movie this was. And I think it was great because it really sort of did illustrate a lot of what classical musicians or jazz musicians, anyone who's studying at a conservatory or something like that, what they have to go through with... Um, if you get a sort of irascible or a very uh, driving kind of professor or mentor and how tough of a situation that can be it was a great soundtrack so um very like jazz a lot of kind of jazz, a lot of drumming so um all right <laughs> soft spot here lamal 40th anniversary um i say lamal to people a lot and they're like i don't know what you're talking about and then if they see the picture they know right away if you remember that era the hair and uh, if I say Mr. Kajagugu or whatever, they'll be like, oh, the too shy guy. Yeah, so Kajagugu did one album produced by Nick Rhodes of Duran Duran. It was extremely popular. Uh, too Shy was a big top 10 hit, even in the US. Um, it was a hit to rival some of the size hits of Duran Duran's hits. And for some strange reason, uh, the manager thought that he wasn't working out as a lead singer and that he was just sort of like dead weight, let's let him go. So they fired him. <laughs> and uh, which was like terrible because they were just really getting started. And uh, so Lamal went on and did uh, a few solo records. But uh, and then at different points, they've the band has reunited and uh, sometimes with him, sometimes without. But he's been on tours with them. And anyway, this was his first solo record. Uh, so kind of like, okay, I've been let go, but I'm going to try and make the best of it. And uh, he had sort of some songs from this that were kind of popular in the UK. Uh, Only for Love was actually a really great song. That was a single. Uh, Too Much Trouble, um, that special something, Tar Beach, whatever. Uh, but it really wasn't until track five here, the theme from The Never Ending Story, which he did with... Um, with uh, Giorgio Moroder. Uh, most of this album was produced by D. Harris and Tim Palmer. Uh, Tim Palmer sort of done a lot of production work for people over the years. But um, 
it wasn't until Giorgio got involved, uh, Mr. Daft Punk. Um, he worked a lot on Daft Punk's uh, Random Access Memories, or at least was featured on one song heavily there. Uh, but anyway, and, and of course produced all the Donna Summer records, the big ones, but um, most of them. But Le Mans, uh, this was a pretty decent sort of new, new wave, new romantic kind of mid 80s pop record. Uh, didn't do massive business in the U.S., but um, that song, Never Ending Story, was a top 20 hit. And uh, so anyway, and I think this is on uh, per color. Oh, it's on a lavender vinyl. So, um, all right. So I didn't really have, I was kind of thinking like, well, oh, I had some CDs too. Let me show those really quick because I don't want to like skip over those too much. Uh, David Bowie, they are reissuing the 2015-ish reissues on digipacks now so you can get uh ziggy stardust on a digipack uh cardiacs this is another one that didn't come in yet on vinyl uh but it's on the way but uh heaven born and ever bright this was their 1992 album which um sort of mixed a lot of metal in with like sea shanties and stuff like that and then also uh, a little box set for the producers um, not the Broadway show. This is a band called Producers put together by Trevor Horn uh, back in 2006. And uh, this is sort of an extended sort of uh, version of that album with like bonus material. But it's uh, Trevor Horn, Lil Krem, uh, Steve Lipson, who's also kind of a big producer in the uh, Trevor Horn realm, Ash Stone, and... Uh, Chris Braid, who's done a lot of production work with uh, Mark Almond and people like that. Now, anyway, um, this is just sort of a deluxe edition of that record. Speaking of Lamal, though, whose um, real last name was Hamill, and that's how he got his name. Um, they just scrambled the letters. Uh, so I decided, like, what am I going to review today? What I was going to be my recommend? It's summer. Um, I don't really have anything specific that I wanted to talk about. So I'm going to say these are my recommends, which are things that uh, say summer to me. And uh, I'm like I said, I'm a kid of the 80s. And uh, I, um, I realize that sometimes this band gets a little bit of a, a knock for like people thinking that, oh, there's some kind of manufactured thing, which they are not. Um, but I just uh, think that, I, oh, you know, recommending this even though everyone knows not everyone i think young people might not know as much about this but um i'm going to recommend duran duran's rio as my album of the week and um so this album was the album that really sent duran duran stratospheric in 1982 and um they had already had one album out in the uk and I think it was released in the U.S. too. I don't remember, but it really, it was sort of, it didn't sell very well at first. And then MTV started and they started playing the first video from this, which was, uh, well, that got aired in the U.S. was Hungry Like the Wolf. Uh, Duran Duran got money from EMI, whoever was bankrolling them at the time to go to Sri Lanka uh, of all places and record the video for that. And it was just like all these young guys like having fun in a very exotic location. And it played like a little mini movie for four or five minutes. And the song was super catchy. And the next thing you knew, it was all over the American airwaves and it rose into the top, I think three in the US even. Um, they sort of remixed this album at one point because they thought that it would be a little more appealing to Americans to uh, turn up the guitars a little bit, lengthen some of the songs a little bit, uh, which was a very common practice, uh, especially by EMI in uh, the early 80s. And they'd been doing it for a while with uh, the Beatles. Uh, Duran Duran sort of got the uh, nickname of like uh, the Fab Five and part of like uh, a second wave of another British invasion in America and uh, during the Reagan years which were sort of um, or I should say the Thatcher years which were seen as sort of like dark times by a fair amount of uh, British people um, they sort of brought a lot of like joy and exuberance 
and maybe eventually it became a little like over the top sort of 80s excess i suppose but um they became uh princess diana's favorite band um, then there's the, like the famous meeting that they had and um, playing for her anyway uh rio is a if just taken on its own sort of musical merits it's an album that's very commercial very uh, made for radio fun to listen to catchy uh but the band is not really a manufactured band uh nick rhodes and john taylor were friends and they started playing music together and then they drafted in uh, Roger Taylor is a drummer and Andy Taylor is a guitarist. So you had three Taylors, none of them supposedly related. And then Simon Le Bon was sort of the last uh, cog there as a vocalist, uh, even though they had um, uh, people like Stephen Duffy originally as the, they're saying, and that would have been strange. I mean, Stephen was, uh, he's a great artist on his own. His music is a lot more sort of pastoral at times, and more, but then also a little more jangly and so maybe uh, and he did some pop records too but didn't really necessarily fit with what this band was doing at the time i guess so or they had some sort of issues so anyway uh simon was the choice um this is actually their second album it was huge uh rio's the first song so like i said uh different versions of the album sound a little different this is the uh, British repressing that just came out. They gave it this cool textured cover. It was done at Abbey Road, but it does have a slightly shorter version of a couple of these songs because this is the, this is the original version. Um, so you get Rio first, followed by My Own Way, which is uh, kind of a, a sort of a f upbeat, up-tempo, kind of like fun rock song too. Uh, when it came out, uh, there were remixes that had like string sections on it. And um, there were the American album, when they reissued it, it had more guitar on it, more overdubs, um, and it was a little bit longer. Uh, but fun second track. Uh, could have been a single or could have been a hit on its own if uh, they decided to pick it up for US radio. Uh, Lonely in Your Nightmare was the third song, kind of more of an introspective, moody song. Then you get Hungry Like the Wolf. So Rio and Hungry Like the Wolf, both big, big hits on American radio. And then Hold Back the Rain, which is on this version a little bit shorter than what the American one, I think, went on for about six minutes, maybe, almost. Um, but that's a great, catchy song. Uh, side two, New Religion, um, sort of moodier, uh, more funky. It shows off a lot of John Taylor's bass playing and the band's dynamic as a band uh last chance on the stairway is kind of a it's an okay track it's sort of just you know you kind of feel it's more of an album track uh and then save a prayer was a huge hit later on in the u.s um because people were sort of like oh that's such a great song why hasn't that been a hit yet and later on when there was a uh, some time when the band was actually uh, kind of having some internal problems. Uh, they weren't really getting along and do, they released a live record and you know they put, put Save a Prayer out as a single and it was another top 10 hit in the US. And the final song on here, The Chauffeur, is a very um, interesting sort of uh, moody kind of like reflection of the new romantics of the era and uh, kind of bands like uh, Visage and Japan after they'd sort of moved on into more arty territory. And it's kind of, it was the first song that uh, I think Simon submitted to the band and the, the lyrics were so uh, poetic in a way, strangely like, um, I mean, some people would say, well, this is just sort of like uh, art school poetry basically is what it is, but is very visual. And uh, I remember at the time, being so like uh, enamored with that song and the visuals that it created that uh, some friends and I made our own, uh, one of my friends, we made a, like a music video out of like slides for like an art project for school or something. So anyway, I highly recommend Duran Duran's. It's a great summer album. It's a lot of fun to listen to. And if you like that, go back and get the first album too, because that's been reissued now. And they kind of work as a pair in a way and this album, uh, so this is, again, the British version. It starts with 
girls on film and plan then planet earth is next on the american it started with a longer version of planet earth so but uh, this also because of that um this one features the song to the shore which was cut from the american album so a lot of american kids didn't even know that song existed until much later when uh they you know managed to get imports from the uk I say, like, oh my gosh there's another song on here uh careless memories was a big sort of like uh rock radio college radio kind of song um anyone out there is a good song side two night boat is sort of um like what they did here with new religion night boat is kind of the same kind of song but it's a little creepier had a like a halloween sort of themed video and they just redid that song for their album that came out last year uh sound of thunder is a great song friends of mine's probably my favorite song on this album i'm like i don't know why it wasn't a single uh such a great catchy song and tel aviv is the last song which is uh, an instrumental it's kind of a heavily nick rhodes type instrumental with a lot of uh string sections and it's very cinematic and stuff and uh, i think he's heavily into sort of well they were very interested in like how they presented themselves to the world visually through films and uh they're very like uh, you know they they play it up their looks uh to a massive effect because uh you know girls around the world in particular were like whoa <laughs> and uh many many guys too so anyway all right um so get some beach time listen to some duran uh summer's winding down in these parts so uh you know enjoy it while it lasts because uh, we're in august uh also coming this month uh i think i mentioned uh next week new king gizzard new ocs amos lee and biba doobie the following week the 16th ray la montaigne foster the people devon allman and uh shelby lynn and then uh, 10 years after uh, at Woodstock. Uh, the 23rd of August, you got Sabrina Carpenter, finally, Fontaine's DC, Lainey Wilson, Spirit of the Beehive, and Magdalena Bay. And August 30th, Nick Cave, Denzel Curry, Luke Combs, Ty Siegel, and Mondo Cosmo. That's kind of a little bit of the month right now as it's sitting uh, that I see. Uh, there may be things like, you never know when a Jack White is going to drop in tomorrow. So uh, be looking for that. Ween, fingers crossed. It's got to show up soon. So uh, anyway, thanks, guys. Have a great weekend. Peace as always. And uh, pray for the future. All right. Take care. Have fun. <laughs>